So, thank you for coming. Uh, this should hopefully be pretty fun. Uh, I started about five minutes late just to get everybody sort of trickled in and on their way in. Uh, my name is John Jacoby. Uh, I work for a company called Tenno. We're pretty cool. We have a desk upstairs. You can come talk to us. Uh, downstairs. Yeah, we're on the 11th floor now. Uh, is there any? Is anybody presenting above us? Really the, see, see, you guys came up here to be like in the cool floor, higher up in the sky. Uh, so this is a session that I sort of had in my imagination for a while. If you've ever like watched anything that I have that I've said that I've done on WordPress.tv, or if you've seen me speak before, you know that I do not like slides. I never like I try. I actually tried doing slides today because I really wanted to like have beautiful slides, like pretty font and like topography and like nice background images and funny memes and stuff. I'm not good at that kind of thing. I feel like it's just not as genuine as just looking through code and sort of talking about like neat stuff that like code is doing. So this is what you're going to get today, just so you know what you're up against. If this is not some fun for you. I will try to make it fun. I'm sorry. That is what you're going to have for the next about 40 minutes or so. So, um, so BB Press is a piece of software uh, that is. Uh, sort of a sister project to WordPress. If you've never used BBPress, I'll give you the quick intro, is that it, uh, it is the, the bulletin board equivalent to WordPress's blogs, right? So if, uh, if you've ever used a support forum, then you, that, that is the problem that BBPress as a piece of software is trying to solve. And uh, long, long time ago, uh, in like 2000 and or I think is when like BB Press was born back in the days of like WordPress and BB Press sort of like blogs were sort of just becoming a real live actual thing that people could have on their own. Everyone sort of already had forums from like a long, long time ago. And uh, Matt, the founder, one of the founders for WordPress, needed support forums for WordPress to say, well, people are using this now, and I need forums to start having discussion about what it is that we're building. So Matt forked another piece of software in a way, kind of, sort of, uh, called MyBB, and used that as the original data schema for the original BB Press back in the day. And uh, I gave a talk at WordCamp San Francisco probably two years ago. Uh, if you want to go and find that somewhere in the universe that's out there. Uh, but there's a really neat sort of screenshot that I like to show, and I don't have it today, but we can find it if we really want to. It's kind of cool. Uh, where like the original bbpress.org was exactly like the original WordPress.org, but it was green <laughs> instead of blue. They were the exact same website, right? Like all of the links and the text pretty much just like shifted around to have like forums being the next cool thing versus blogs being the next cool thing. Uh, and then for a while, like download counts and everything were pretty much identical. I mean, like they were sort of neck and neck in terms of like 50,000 downloads, 80,000 downloads. It was like, wow, everybody's. Software is taking off. It's really cool. And then eventually blogs were like, oh, well, WordPress is like way cooler. And then nobody really sort of, like, the forums weren't sexy anymore, right? Like, why would I need all of the maintenance of a forum? Well, I can just blog to myself out into the universe, and I can just fill the content alone and, and, and fill the void all by myself on my own site. So as much as, like, one of, the, one of the fun secrets, I think, is that as much as WordPress is a fork of, you know, B2 Evo, right, the old sort of blogging software, is BBPress, in its roots, was also a fork of some other piece of software that, uh, that you know, started off as one thing that ended up sort of shape-shifting around into being something completely different. And uh, so back in 2010, um, and maybe, maybe I'll go through some history quick of, of BBPress, but Back in 2010, we came to the conclusion that BB Press as a piece of software was clearly like one not as like clearly not as successful as WordPress was. Right, like WordPress took off and there's conferences, and there's all this stuff happening all over the place with WordPress. And like I said, forums were like not the new cool thing anymore. So, uh, you know, the community around BB Press was super passionate, right? Like, if you've used it, if you've heard of it before, if you've seen the forums, like, bbpress.org is still a thing, right? Like, the users are all integrated with WordPress.org, so it's the same password that you use to log into bbpress.org as you do on WordPress.org. But, 
uh, big pain point with DD Press back in the day was integration. Like you have a WordPress blog that you've had for a really long time and you have comments in it, you have a username and a password, this is your website. And then you decide, well, I want to have like maybe your plugin developer or a theme developer. And what you want is a way to support your users with a support forum. It's pretty straightforward, right? Like you want to give your users a place to talk in a way that is not necessarily under your control, right? Like comments you're moderating, you're going through and replying, there's like a lot of responsibility there. When you have forums, it's a little easier to say, well, go post over here in this part of my site, and let's chat sort of about that later, right? So what would happen was there's this huge integration thing between installing WordPress, installing BBPress. They had their own separate database tables. They had their own separate approach towards trying to get users to log in and drop cookies and make all that stuff work. And if we were going to pull up bbpress.org right now, which I have my Wi-Fi turned off because I don't want pop-ups and random stupid, the stupid thing with the window and the canceling was annoying. So that's turned off. But um, but integrating your logins between your WordPress site and your bbpress site was actually kind of a nightmare. I mean, it, under the hood, it wasn't that difficult, but you ended up with some funny problems with. Uh, with being able, like your cookies would get dropped for your WordPress site and you'd be able to go into WP Admin, but when you would try to go into BB Admin, it wouldn't work for some reason. Like you were logged in, but you couldn't actually, get, it, would, it would bounce you back out. So you can be logged into one half of your site and not the other. That was this really frustrating sort of experience. And originally, like you used XML RPC under the hood and there was all this like fun, sort of neat developer stuff underneath it. And it was like fun for us to like make it work and build it and make it go. But over time, you sort of realize like this is not fun for anybody. Like the four install minimum of getting BB Press in and working and connected to your WordPress site was just not a good experience. So back in 2010, um, Matt and I, sort of like the rest of the enthusiastic BB Press community, Sort of took it upon ourselves to decide that like BB Press needed to be a plugin inside of WordPress. There were like some people that did not love this idea, and I was also still some days don't always love this idea. But long story short is in terms of like community involvement, engagement, patches, like the health of the project overall, it makes sense. It was like a good idea. It was like the best thing for BB Press as a project, and. In doing this, we sort of were able to uh, like make a lot of really neat decisions that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So in 2010, what we basically did was we started with a fresh repo for BB Press. We basically said all of these old things and decisions that we've made, like really awesome learning experiences, and we like were able to see what worked and what didn't, and see what it was that people wanted to do, and take that and take the good parts of it, and then say, okay, the good stuff is good, but let's redo the stuff that we don't like. And this was about the same time, if you have been around in the WordPress community for long enough, you probably remember when custom post types were introduced, custom taxonomies were introduced, uh, and now you start to see how well something like BBPress can all of a sudden fit right in, right? They can just register a post type, you can make it go, and you like, suddenly have like a really easy head start for making forums fit inside of WordPress. And so if you've never used BBPress, we can sort of go over a little bit of what it looks like. But this is pretty much what you end up getting. Is uh, on the left hand now, you have what are effectively three custom post types. Now forums as a post type is a little weird, uh, but because we don't have taxonomy term meta to sort of shove some neat information about forums into, we're sort of stuck with forums as a post type. And there were some compromises that BB Press has to make in order to make this sort of hierarchical custom post type dance work. But in the end, it actually works okay. Um, but the neat thing about this is that WordPress fills in a bunch of UI for us, right? We have post rows, uh, we have all of the things that custom post types give us, like icons. But BB Press has to do a bunch of extra little work to say, add a separator in the middle, right? To drop it in the, in the menu so it's not at the bottom and so it doesn't overlap other menu items. It has to have all this other little wonky stuff in order to make the hover state for the icons be color. Because in a custom post type, you only have one little icon setting or one little icon parameter. And you can't do anything with it besides have one black and white or one color icon. So BBPress ends up being this sort of neat plugin that says, okay, 
we're going to work within all of the constraints that WordPress like, puts you in when you want to have custom content types. But also, we're going to show you about the rightest way as we can to get around some of these weird little WordPress quirks and downfalls and weird little places where once you start using something that needs to be this robust, uh, you end up filling in a lot of gaps as we go. And so looking through code, uh, and part of, like, one of the things that um, was sort of an architectural design decision uh, which I guess there are arguments, pros and cons, and we can talk about forever, is that BBPress loads itself up in what is basically one big singleton. We can talk about the singleton design parameter forever, yes or no, it's good or it's bad, that's fine. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. It's neither here nor there. But uh, in being able to, in, in, in setting it up this way, also means that BBPress as a plugin does not necessarily live anywhere in like the global namespace where you would be accessing it or stomping it on accident. Which is huge, right? Because it means like if, you, if you're a developer and you're familiar with the post global or the WP query global, and you've seen anyone go in and start touching it and poking at it and changing it and maybe setting it to false on accident or overwriting it, BBPress does not suffer this problem right off the bat. Because the only way to actually talk to BBPress or do anything with it is to call the BBPress function itself. So there's just a function called BBPress that will give you what BBPress is. This means you can interact with it in a way that is safe. BBPress knows what it is that you are allowed to touch and what you are not allowed to touch. It will prevent you as a developer who is writing plugins for BBPress from breaking it. It knows what will break it, and it will try to stop that from happening. So it's actually really nice where one, it's not in the global namespace, so you can't break it. And two, it's sort of self-aware, so it will make sure that any of the little bits and pieces that it needs to function will always be around. So that's like one of the first things. And in doing this also means that uh, as a plugin, we're able to rely almost 100% exclusively on WordPress's actions and filters. So we're not doing any processing on just a file inclusion or on load. Whenever we pull files in, we're not forced to execute any code right away in line. So WordPress pulls in the plugin, right? Like you have to make BBPress and WordPress says, hey, load this plugin, pull in bbpress.php. And in here, we have a bunch of functions, right, that are all defined and classes that are defined. And up to the point where let's just say that you really, for some reason, didn't want BBPress to load itself, you can write a plugin to reorder the load process for BBPress and set it in, like a priority on plugins loaded. So all of BBPress from the very first step of needing to include it as a plugin is 100% pluggable. Who here has heard of like, pluggable.php, right? So everything, like there are some parts of WordPress that are pluggable, where you can unplug the user process, authentication, cookies, logins, some of the user stuff mostly is in there that's pluggable. Well, like from the very, very get-go, everything in BBPress is completely pluggable. And the funny thing about this is it's not just the load process, but it actually is uh, even the, uh, what's the easiest way to put it? So in the BBPress class, is a method for includes. And this includes method is, in, is actually hooked into an action. So not only is the actual load process of BBPress pluggable, but the actual file inclusion part of BBPress is pluggable, which means that if you wanted to rewrite, you wanted to customize any one function that comes in BBPress that's in any one of the files that BBPress includes, you can just do your own. You can just include your own file and replace anything that BBPress comes with. So the thing about that is, like, let's just say that you don't like the way that the, the, the way that you would get a reply ID to a topic. You can just write your own function and replace that whole file and replace the way that it works and be totally okay. So BBPress, like, under the hood, and the reason why this session is here is because this is not difficult to do. Like, as a plugin developer, even as a theme developer. These are things that you can do that will save all of your users an immense amount of time. Even if you're building sites, as much as it could sort of be, there's an argument for this being like over-architecting in some ways, like I agree that in a lot of ways you may not ever need to do any of this stuff. But there is something nice about knowing that uh, you can decide as a developer who's using BBPress at what point you want to turn your code change into a contribution to BBPress, or whether or not this is something that 
you want to just be your own little hack that has nothing to do with like, like no one should, should see what it is that you're doing. What you've done is like this really gross, awful thing that you want to keep secret to yourself. That is also okay. But you are able to do that and maybe press enables for that functionality. And the other way, and the other sort of neat thing that I think um, WordPress is sort of funny in a way where uh, every action and filter that happens in WordPress uh, is sort of forced to happen in the global namespace, right, of, of what WordPress is running inside of. There is no way to say that an action should only happen within some certain scope of WordPress, because they all always happen in the entire installation all the time. And that's sort of good in a way, but it also makes it very easy with like filters like the title, right? If you ever filter the title, that filter, the underscore title, is in WordPress core, I think, nine or 10 times, right? And like, there are places where it just has to fire on some content on the title of something that's being put out to the page. But you never, you don't reliably know where it's happening or when. So if you filter the title and you only want it to happen in a certain place, like on the front of the site, you have to do this decision on your own. Are we in the admin? Return. Are we in this thing? Return. Are we doing this? No. You have to filter in first and then ask questions later, which is sort of a bad way to do this. So what BeanyPress does is something that I call, and call it whatever I want, but I, I call it a sub-action. So in some WordPress actions that we have, hopefully everybody can see this okay, uh, there are some sort of like core actions that WordPress uses that most plugins will look into. Plugins loaded being one of them, init, uh, parse query widgets in it, and you can sort of see what's here, right? So uh, instead of hooking into a net and trying to do something, we actually hook in what is basically like a, like a sub action on top of it so that BB press later on can hook into itself. So what this does is this adds a funky sort of extra abstraction to actions to let you reorder them if you need to, to let you rehook things in a different place if you need to. If there's a conflict with another plugin and you want to rearrange some things, actually makes it really, really easy to do. So onto init, we hook in BBP init. Onto plugins loaded, we hook in BBP loaded. And so rather than have BBPress hook into all these WordPress actions, BBPress just hooks into itself instead. So BBPress says, okay, well on BBP loaded, we want to load up some constants. We want to bootstrap any of the weird little globals that we've got. We want to include our files, we want to set up the globals that we think that we pulled in. We want to do all these things all in an order. So you get to see very visually, like how is BBPress booting itself up? Like this is BBPress's boot up process. How we register our custom post types. How we register whatever little theme packages we have. How we register custom roles. So what this also gives you is sort of, a, sort of a, an order of execution for your plugin right off of the bat. And there are like different arguments again for how to write code, when you write a function, do you put that action right underneath that function? So it's easy to see what that function is doing. Like, yes, I, I think you should in most cases. But on a very, very large plugin, if you think of BB Press or Buddy Press or shopping carts or event calendar plugins where you have lots of interactivity, there's something to be said for having all of them in one place. So you get a real easy snapshot of when code gets pulled in, at what point, and why. And so in actions.php, you can see there's like a ton of different places uh, where everything gets hooked in, and we hook in everything to all these sort of neat little places. And there are some places where it doesn't make sense for there to be sub-actions, because there's only one thing that BeanyPress needs to do to interact with it. It sort of seems like having another bolt-on action on top of it starts to be a little bit too over-architecty. Some over-architecty, it's not really a word, but I'm going to um, You know, like trashing a post. Uh, on trashing posts, those things are just actions that like a post is going to take, so trying to bolt on all the separate layers starts to be a little bit much. So there are some places where in BBPress's code, you'll notice that it's not that, uh, there isn't that layer, level of depth. Uh, but the other part of it also that makes it really nice is that uh, we've tried to keep everything really well documented in the code. So as much as it can sometimes be a little bit intimidating to dive in and start looking at the actual code that's running BBPress itself, uh, BBPress, like, we want you to do that. We want you to go straight to the code and start looking at how it works. Because one, 
uh, the audience of contributors is, relative, is a little bit lower than what it is with WordPress. So I want you to come in and feel very comfortable about what it is that you're looking at and uh, to understand sort of how MediaPress is working. And two, uh, it's just friendly, right? It's just a good thing to do to document your code, right? So I try to be friendly if I can. What else is cool? Where are we on time? What am I doing? 410? So I'll talk about three things in 10 minutes. And then there'll be questions maybe at the end if we want to, if we want to do that. One of them is, uh, you know how WordPress has a concept of parent and child theme? And then uh, sort of like one of the natural questions that like everybody asks, which is like, like when you know the answer, it's like funny to laugh at, but the question is like, what do you do when you want more than that? Like are there grandchild themes? Like how do you replace bits and pieces of content when you want to? And it's really difficult to do in WordPress. Well, it's not difficult, but it's tricky, right? There's like a lot of stuff you have to do to try and figure out how all those pieces fit. And uh, there's a WordPress core ticket that I opened, which is sort of like a conceptual thing on like how this could be sort of enhanced in sort of a funny way. And like in terms of like the history of BB Press, the parent child theme thing is like one of those things that I think BB Press pioneered originally. Uh, almost an accident where it was like, instead of parent child, it was style sheet and template. So, like, the template was where the PHP and the template output lived, and then the style sheet was where the CSS lived. So, original BB Press, you had like the normal BB Press green theme, and then it came the blue one. So, that was why they were named that way, and then it was eventually ported into WordPress later. So, that's like a funny thing, too. But. So, BB Press has what's called a template stack, which you, as a developer, uh, can actually register a template location. And it uses WordPress's filters API to do this. So BBPress registers its own template stack location as like a fallback in the BBPress templates folder, so that if your theme does not support BBPress, it will naturally try and look up the stack into the plugin itself to pull in template parts. Which also means that like if you wanted to register a template stack, there's a function in BBPress to say, okay, Let's write a plugin that comes with some templates, and let's put that in the stack higher in a different order, maybe like a negative number, so it looks there first. So you can actually write a plugin that only comes with templates for BBPress, and never have to hack BBPress core, never touch an active theme, and never hack WordPress. So this is also one of those things that comes in, BB, in, in BuddyPress also, so you can register individual little locations for templates to live anywhere that you want in the file system and pull that code in. So it's like one of those fun little mini press secrets that you know, eventually there could be room in WordPress core for, but not a lot of people know it exists because there's no, not a whole lot of real reason to go in poking around at what the template stack is. The other part that is sort of fun is the, let's see if I can find it. So who here, as a developer, has used WP parse args? You have like two arrays of things and you want to parse them together and figure out what the difference of them is? And it happens a lot, right? Like you have a function, like WP query, and you have some arguments, some array items that you need to parse into them. So there's a problem with this function, in a, in a, in, which is not really a problem, but you run into it a lot when you say, okay, the only things that I can do with parse args is I can call a WP query and pass new arguments into it and compare them or I can try and look in this function somewhere for a filter, so hopefully after parse args has happened, I can, sorry, I can uh, filter what those arguments were, and hopefully they're in a good place so that I can manipulate the output or manipulate the results of whatever that function is, which is like fine enough, but the thing with parse args is they're all over the place. If we look in WordPress core for WP parse args, hundred and fifty three times. So there's hundred and fifty three individual little places where WP parse args, in order for you to have like full flexibility over the arguments that are parsed, would be the hundred and fifty three extra filters that would need to be in WordPress core in order to allow for you to have like maximum flexibility for that function. And that's sort of sucks to have that many filters in there, right? So BBPress just has a function called BBP parse args, and it works exactly the same way as WP parse args does, 
except you pass a context in it, which is supposed to be like a unique ID similar to actions and filters. And then BDP parse args runs passive and aggressive filters on that output, or on that difference. So before the actual array merge happens, we say, hey, apply filters BBP before whatever the arbitrary key was that you passed. And let's figure out what the difference is here. Let's, let's see, let's apply filters on whatever that is. And then we do our merge, and then we apply another filter after the fact. So you end up with like a passive and aggressive way to take any arguments that BB press would ever parse. And you can choose, hey, well, we see that you passed in one set of array items. Let's change it, and then let's see what is actually being requested. Or you can wait until all that's done and say, I don't really care what we passed in and what we're using. Let's override it completely anyways. Let's end up with whole brand new output. So BBP parser is actually used in a bunch of places, short codes, widgets, any place, because what ends up happening is sometimes you want you want to manipulate that difference. Like a WP query gets ran, you want to pull topics or forums or replies out of something, and you don't want to hack core, you don't want to have to hack something into functions.php, you don't want to hack the theme. What you do want is an easy way to filter what that logic is. <laughs> so BBP parsers just gives you a super easy way to intercept that logic and come in and come out without writing your own plugin versus hacking core or touching anything else. And then I forgot what the third one was. Let's see. Oh, let's talk about user roles quick. Let's see. So since I have eight minutes, um, another fun thing that BBPress does, which if you are uh, an author of like a robust plugin or a theme and you're looking to actually interact with WordPress's roles or capabilities, one, this is like a dangerous approach, but it's actually really sweet. So I would suggest trying it and then seeing if it like works for you or not. Um, but WordPress's roles and capabilities is like really flexible. I know it, it catches a lot of grief for the, sort of the way that it works and for it being a little bit flat, a little bit complicated. It's actually pretty good. I mean, in terms of the APIs that are in WordPress core, this is one of them that hasn't needed to be rewritten in like a really long time, right? Like there's a lot of stuff going on in the hood, but this one's pretty much stayed the same. There's like one quirk, there's a core ticket for it, there's a patch on it, we don't have to talk about it. What, what, what this is, is BBPress doesn't actually register its roles the same way that you would register a brand new role in WordPress because uh, in BBPress and because we're introducing a brand new functionality to a WordPress site, your user on the blog may be an admin or maybe a moderator or maybe a contributor or maybe whatever they are, but they might need to be something different in their forums. And rather than have BBPress come in and pollute the way that WordPress's roles and counts are and say, hey, your editor can suddenly manage all your stuff in your forums, and what if they can? What if your editor shouldn't have anything to do with your forums, right? One user needs to have two roles, and they can. Weird, right? So, BBPress has what is approximately dynamic roles. So BBPress loads these in, and the end result ends up looking um, like this. So you end up with a site role, or like a blog role, and a forum role. So a user can conceptually be any one of these forum roles. They can be a key master, a little Ghostbusters reference. Uh, they can be a moderator, a participant, a spectator, which means they can't post at all, or just completely blocked. They cannot read, they cannot write here, they do not see your forums at all. Uh, but think of how this works, right? Like rather than take a user that like is a customer in your shopping cart, right? Whatever it is, your downloads, your whatever it is that's over there. They may not need to be an editor on your blog or uh, a contributor or any of the other WordPress roles. There's no point for them having a WordPress role in many cases, but they may need to have some other role. Or they may need to have both, right? Like maybe someone that is an editor on your site buys something from your store. So there is, there could be any sort of number of permutations there. And uh, if you need a good example on how that works, uh, it's pretty straightforward in BBPress on how these are all registered and what's in there. So there's a really good example on how that works in here. 
um, all of the caps are just like in a big array. So if you want to get a keymaster role, here is a list of the things that a keymaster can do. And then same with moderator on the um, list. Let's see what blocked is. Blocked is kind of fun. I don't think they get any. So blocked user has negative caps, which is freaky, right? Like WordPress actually has a concept of false capabilities built into it. It's not really used anywhere. But it's fun to think about that. Not only can a user not have a cap, you can explicitly say they could never ever have it again. You can say that they do not, not only if they ever get it, they just can't have it. So having a false capability is like another press secret and trick. But you get the idea, we just pass an array of caps, and we filter it at the end, obviously. And uh, we have some helper functions for getting all of these things. But the, sort of the neat part about it is that uh, the only thing that really should end up getting saved into your user's user meta for their caps is just their role. Sometimes WordPress does funny things and it actually does save the caps in all caps also, but it only does it if you have like role editing plugins that are doing no many things. So, um, oh, I've got one more because we have three minutes, I think. Um, and if there's questions, we can talk about that also, but. One of the neat things that we brought over from uh, the original BB Press was the idea that uh, the options for the plugin could actually be pre-configured in, say, like a separate plugin. So BB Press has just an options array, and in the uh, options API for BB Press, we keep sort of a track of what the default options that BB Press comes with are, and what those what that value should be. And so what ends up happening is if, say, in an MU plugin or in a secondary plugin, you define, like you filter what these options are in BBPress's options array, it'll look there first and say, hey, well, even though we know that the throttle time for editing a post should be 10 minutes, you have filtered it to be two, then what happens is it disables that option so that you, as like a key master, can't edit that option, and it's visible for you, so you can still see it. So it actually gives you a mechanism to say on like a multi-site installation where you are running forums for your whole entire community of multi-site sites that you have, you can pre-configure what those settings are in BBPress and then not allow anyone to actually change those settings. So you lock that site in to a configuration without allowing them to change it and still allowing them to see what those options are. So it was like one of those neat things where when uh, the idea of a multi-site hosted BBPress, sort of like a WordPress.com equivalent for BBPress was being passed around, that needing the ability to lock those options down uh, and disable them from being edited uh, was sort of drunked up. And so we brought that in also into BBPress 2.0. So it's like another one of those like, fun little secrets that nobody ever really sees. Uh, and when we were bringing BBPress into uh, WordPress.com VIP, we actually ended up using that a little bit because there's not a whole lot of a reason to uh, go in there and edit those settings. But there may be a reason for someone to see them and go, well, maybe we, maybe we want to change this, but hey, John, why would I want to change this? What are the repercussions for changing this in my hosted environment? And then opening that dialogue versus it being an experiment for them instead. So that is most of what I had. There's like a ton more secrets in BBPress that we can talk about. If you want to talk about them, obviously, I would love to chat about all of them all the time. And uh, I have approximately four seconds for questions if there are any. <laughs> Jesse. Uh, so this might be a little crazy, but running a multi-site with hundreds of sites you have admins in those individual sites, but giving them access to a um, master site form where they are not an admin, but rather uh, you know just a, someone to communicate with. Or um, are you suggesting sort of using the role switching in multi-site? Um, kind of. Right. So if I understand the question is that. Uh, you have a multi-site installation, you have forums that are active on them. One forum. One forum. Okay. 
So then, correct. So in that type of an installation, I'll repeat this, is uh, think of something like buddypress.org, it's probably a really good example. On buddypress.org, on the root of that site, we have forums for supporting buddypress. But we also have codex.buddypress.org and fr.buddypress for French and es.buddypress.org for Spanish. Uh, but the root site has forums on them. So in that instance, and the way that we've done this, which is the way that I would suggest, is we're sort of funny in this way, but uh, when you register for buddypress.org, or when you register for wordpress.org, either way, we, WordPress assumes that you have the a capability to read the site. As a visitor to the site, you are able to see it. If I want to make someone a moderator, without giving them editor or contributor on the, on the blog, then I just edit their account, make them a moderator in the forums, it saves that to their user meta, and they cannot do anything in the blog, but they can do everything that they need to in the forums. So in that way, multiple roles for a user uh, works perfectly for the way that we would want it. Because the alternative would be <laughs> forcing them to also be an editor that can do something. We don't want that, right? Like, there are very few people that uh, have control over the BuddyPress.org blog that also have control over the forums themselves. So that is how Beanie Press makes that happen. And for something like BuddyPress, there would also be room, although we haven't really integrated that with BuddyPress at all, there's room for that too, right? To be a community moderator that can control everything but also has no rights to the blog itself. Uh, there are, you know, that's, that kind of stuff is on the roadmap, but that's how you would use that. Anybody else? If not, thank you. And contribute. Help BBPress be better. Uh, go to BBPress.org. Use it, try it, like it, hate it, let me know. Idle and IRC on free node. We're just in BBPress or BBPress slash dev or hyphen dev. And uh, hopefully I'll see you around.